Hello Booktube! My uh, Booktube week has not quite gone the way I had planned. Uh, by this point, this should be my fourth video of the week, but things did not quite go my way. Um, there were a number of uh, discussion videos I wanted to do. Uh, there was one about, um, I wanted to talk a bit about finding a hobby. Um, also, some forthcoming writing projects as a response to Steve Donahue, um, and also a book, or uh, not a book, a uh, discussion about what to do with my history wall, because I am fast running out of space on the history wall, and I don't know if I should expand into another part of my library space, or if I should pretty much leave the history wall as it is and just um, weed through some of those books. But I did get three books in today, so I'm going to do a book haul. Um, now, normally I do my book hauls at the end of the month, um, and I show the accumulated books that I've brought in over the course of the month. But I don't really talk a whole lot about the books. I just show them. And briefly touch on them because my hauls are usually rather large. But I want to try to change things up. So I'm going to, for this month, uh, do book hauls as they come in. Now, sometimes those hauls are going to be rather minuscule because it'll only be one book. But it'll still work. Um, not entirely sure what Brady Taylor got to say because there's not much going on in the weather. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, Brady Taylor is one of the lead meteorologists in the uh, local um, kind of broadcast region. Um, he does the uh, KWTX, which is the CBS affiliate, um, and I have their um, weather app, and he'll sometimes pop in, and sometimes he won't. But anyway, so let's get on with the books. Um, so first up is, and they're all new releases, uh, which is why they're, this haul's a bit later than would be normal if it was the post office, because I some books I pre-ordered through Amazon, and they use UPS, so the UPS deliveries are a bit later, or they're almost always later than the post office deliveries. But anyway, so so these are three. Uh, new releases in history, which is only compounding the problem of the history of all. But it's a good problem. So first up is Beyond the Wall, A History of East Germany by Katja Hoyer. Uh, Katja Hoyer is also the author of Iron and Blood, which is a fantastic um, introductory history. It's a very slim history of the formation of the German Empire and the history of the German Empire from 71 to 1918. So it's the build up to the unification of Germany and then the empire. And it really could bear to be about 600 pages longer. It is fantastic. But anyway, so this particular book is the history of East Germany, which um, was the eastern part of Germany that formed um, under Soviet occupation and existed for some 40 years or 40 plus years um, under Soviet um, patronage. So I'm going to read the blurb, which I can do now that I'm doing these um, individual or as they come in book also. In 1990, a country disappeared. When the Iron Curtain fell, East Germany ceased to be. For over 40 years, from the ruin of the Second World War to the cusp of a new millennium, the German Democratic Republic presented a radically different Germany than what had come before and what exists today. Socialist solidarity, secret police, central planning, barbed wire. This was the Germany forged on the fault lines of ideology and geopolitics. In Beyond the Wall, acclaimed historian Katja Hoyer sets aside the usual Cold War characters of the GDR to offer a kaleidoscopic new vision of this vanished country, revealing the rich political, social, and cultural landscape that existed amid oppression and hardship, rather than a gray communist blur somewhere on the far side of the Berlin Wall. 
we see East Germany as it really was, in all its contradictions, a place that offered comprehensive welfare, unprecedented gender equality, and the destruction of class privilege alongside brutal state repression. Drawing on a vast array of never-before-seen interviews and documents, this is, a de this is the definitive history of the other Germany, Beyond the Wall. So, Beyond the Wall has had a mixed reception. Um, outside of Germany, um, I think the critical appraisal has been largely positive, while within Germany, it's been more critical and more negative. Um, so yeah, Beyond the Wall. Sticking with Germany, um, and one I'm really excited for, this is Bismarck's, wall, uh, Bismarck's War, the Franco-Prussian War and the Making of Modern Europe by Rachel Crestel. I have a sweet tooth for the Franco-Prussian War, and um, surprisingly, uh, this period in European history. But anyway, let's go read the blurb. Among the conflicts that convulsed Europe during the 19th century, none was more startling and consequential than the Franco-Prussian War of 1870-1871, deliberately engineered by Prussian Chancellor Otto von Bismarck. The war succeeded in shattering French supremacy, deposing Napoleon III, and uniting a new German empire. But it also produced brutal military innovations and a precarious new balance of power that together set the stage for the devastating world wars of the next century. In Bismarck's War, historian Rachel Crestel chronicles the events on the battlefield in full while also drawing on first-person accounts from both sides to paint an intimate portrait of life in wartime. The fighting put German combatants in ordinary French in direct contact, reshaping and blurring the boundaries between soldier and civilian, while familiar features of modern war like machine gun, universal conscription, and Red Cross volunteers were deployed for the first time. Meticulously researched and unsparingly rendered, Bismarck's War is the definitive history of a transformative conflict that changed Europe and the history of warfare forever. So, definitely sounds interesting and is one of two uh, histories of the Prussian, uh, the Franco-Prussian War that I have. Um, and finally, going a bit further back in time for this one, uh, Rome and Persia, the 700-Year Rivalry by Adrian Goldsworthy. Um, Adrian Goldsworthy is um, one of the major popular historians of uh, Roman history. And this is his latest. The Roman Empire was like no other, stretching from the north of Britain to the Sahara and from the Atlantic coast to the Euphrates. It imposed peace and prosperity on an unprecedented scale. Its only true rival lay in the east, where the Parthian and then Persian empires ruled over great cities and the trade routes to mysterious lands beyond. This was the region through which Alexander the Great had swept, creating a dream of glory and conquest that tantalized Greeks and Romans alike. Tracing seven centuries of conflict between Rome and Persia, historian Adrian Goldsworthy shows how these two great powers evolved together. Despite their endless clashes, trade between the empires enriched them both, and a mutual respect prevented each from permanently destroying the other. Epic in scope, Rome and Persia completely reshapes our understanding of one of the greatest rivalries in world history. Sounds fantastic. So yeah, that is my three book book haul. I'm not entirely sure which of these I'll get to first, which will be this weekend. Because um, I want to read one of them this weekend, uh, just not entirely sure which one. I mean, I'm currently reading a book on German history, so maybe Rome and Persia, but I really am tempted by Bismarck's War, so we'll see. So anyway, Booktube, that was my uh, first book haul of September, and since there aren't that many books, let's do a Steve Pyramid. So, well, wait. I think 
So we have Rome and Persia by Adrian Goldworthy. Um, Bismarck's War by Rachel Crestill. And Beyond the Wall by Katya Hoyer. So, fantastic. Anyway, I will be back tomorrow, hopefully, with um, some more videos. Hopefully, um, some of my discussion videos will pan out. And maybe even a book tag. Uh, or, yeah. Then I'm not as brighty. I don't know. So, anyway. So, until then, book tip. Thank you. Have a great afternoon. And stay safe.